Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see about the CBOM library and how it is useful in EDU. Okay, so first, okay, so we are going to see the CBOM library. Okay, this is one of the graphical library supported in the Python. which is built upon this is built upon the matplot library and it has lot of built in functions it has lot of built in functions to draw the graph in the chart so basically all these are used for performing EDA, that is exploratory analysis. So under Seaborn, we have n number of uh, library functions. So we'll be seeing one by one, what are the different library functions that we can use it. Okay, so before that, let us import all the uh, libraries which is required. So NumPy, Pandas, and Matplot library also is required. So we'll just import all this. And uh, Seaborn can directly uh, manipulate your data frame. So we can directly take up an example data set and then we can uh, do the perform, we can perform the Seaborn library functions. So, okay, let me read one data set. So data one is equals to, or I'll use it as DF. I'm reading a data set. Okay. So PD dot read underscore csv i'm just taking an insurance csv okay df dot head let's see what are the columns that is present okay, okay. so this is the insurance data set okay so we have age column, we have sex, BMI, children, smoker, region, and the charges. So based upon the uh, age factor, BMI factor, child, and the smoker, whether he's a smoker or not, and based on the region also, his premium ranges will differ. So uh, using this data set, we will perform some of the Seaborn library functions. Okay. So the first chart that we are going to see is called as your line plot. Okay, just to draw a line, okay, between two variables. Okay, the function that I'm going to use is line plot. Okay, this is to draw a line between two variables. So the syntax is SNS, which is Seaborn allies, SNS, line plot, okay, line plot. And now you have to specify your any field, okay? Any two fields you can specify. Say suppose df of age with children. Okay, we'll get a line plot between the age and the children. Okay, so your line plot will look like this. Say suppose if you want to be specific with one particular column, then you can give like this also with a huge parameter. Okay, comma, huge is equals to, say suppose it is a region. Okay, I have given a wrong, okay. So now, okay, with the, with the one particular column, if you want it, you can just give df of 
region. Okay, so this will plot the same line graph, but with respect to the region, it will show you the output. The next we are going to see is about the scatter plot. Yeah, you can see the line plot with respect to one particular region. So you can see the different lines between the age and the children based upon the region wise. So I have given Q is equals to TF of region. So with respect to region, okay. So it is displaying the line chart. Okay. The second thing that we are going to see is your scatter plot. So similar kind to line chart, but without a line, it will only show you the points. So for that, the function is scatter plot. The function name is scatter plot. Okay. So for scatter plot also, uh, you can specify any two columns. Okay. Let me copy the same thing here. Instead of line plot, you will just give scatter plot. Okay. So you can see here. This is, it will just point with respect to a point. All the points will be shown as your scatters. So this is one chart. You can change the different columns also. So if you want, we can check with respect to any other two columns without specific output. So you can remove the hue and maybe instead of age, I can put charges. Okay. Yeah. You can see this is also a scatter plot between the children and the charges. Okay. This is scatter plot. And the next one we'll see is your box plot. Okay, so box plot is, uh, it gives you the statistical summary. Okay, so uh, it is also called as the five number summary. Okay, so box plot is going to give you, gives the statistical summary. It gives you the statistical summary. It is also called as box and whiskers plot. Okay. And uh, one variable can be categorical here. One of your axes can be categorical here. Okay. Box plot, violin plot, swamp plot, all this supports for the categorical as well as. So it can represent categorical as well as continuous variables also. Okay, so uh, SN, same thing, SNS dot box plot. Okay. You can specify whatever columns you wanted. Okay, say suppose, uh, say let's assume we'll do only for one variable now. So data df. Okay, df of charges. Okay, we check for one column now. So you can see here, this is the block box plot. Okay, so the first line which indicates this is the minimum value and the, this last line indicates it is a maximum value and all these are outliers which comes out of your uh, line. Maximum line is your uh, outliers. And the line in the box, okay, in the box, the middle line is called as your median. And the first line indicates 25th percentile. And this shows the 50th percentile. And this is 75th percentile. So this is for uh, showing the statistics, how your values are being distributed. So you can have single column or you can have two columns. So when you have two columns, 
you can have one as your categorical and one as your continuous so let me have df of region so df of region with df of charges okay yeah it will show you like this box plot okay what will be the charges with respect to southwest region what will be the charges with respect to southeast and northwest and northeast so like this we can bring out the relationship between one variable and the other variable so this is called as your box plot okay the next one is called as your violin plot okay violin chart or we say violin plot okay so this is used to visualize the distribution of okay distribution of the data so whenever you want to see how is your data distributed distribution of data and also your probability density also also to see the probability distribution we can use the violin chart okay so syntax is sms dot violin chart okay violin chart and you can here also go for two columns or one column so let me copy these two so sms dot violin chart of df region with charges while in plot not chart so plot okay you can see this is the while in chart and in between there is a line that shows your inter percentile okay so the minimum the maximum 25 50 and the 75 percentile we have seen in the box plot right so that is shown in the middle and uh, it shows the probability distribution where exactly less number of values are there where a majority of the values are present so the probability distribution also shown and the white dot which is shown in between here this is called as the median okay so that's without that's with respect to violin chart and then we have a bar plot okay so bar plot also to show the frequency okay the frequency distribution or the frequency of the observation okay we can record it using the bar plot okay so in bar plot also we can have the uh, categorical variable as well as the continuous variable so sns dot bar plot okay and you can have two columns let me copy the same okay yeah so we get a bar plot here so based upon the region what is the charges so from this graph we can find out only the southeast people are more are paying more charges and the least one is southwest so we can make out lot of uh, statistical summaries from these graphs too so this is with respect to bar plot the same thing when you want it in the horizontal side then we have to change the orientation so when you give orient variable is equals to h okay orient is equals to h then it becomes a horizontal bar chart okay okay the next is we'll go for the count plot okay count plot is like to plot uh, uh, the count the total summary count so it can be applied for only one column okay it can be applied for one column so sns dot count plot okay df of say suppose you want to have region
okay it will show you here okay in southwest there are 301 count okay in southeast we have nearly 350 count and in the northwest we have something around 310 or something and northeast also like that so count plot is going to give you the count of a particular categorical variable the next one is your dist plot which is nothing but the histogram or we say frequency table okay so again uh, disk plot also can be used with respect to one column so let us see sns dot disk plot of bf of okay charges okay so this shows like how is the prices are being distributed so we can see majority of the prices are uh, between 0 to 5000 and between 5000 to 10000 like that so if you want we can increase the number of bins or decrease the number of bins so the additionally you have to add bins is equals to 20 or something okay you can see it's slightly spread or if you want to give 30 you can see still closer it has become so this is for histogram like to get the frequency table and the next one is we call it as a heat map so heat map basically we use it for bringing out the correlation between variables so correlation between variables so only when variables are highly correlated then we can use them in the machine learning algorithm otherwise we can skip it so it is used to select the parameters based on the based on the correlation between them. So you can see a negative correlation as well as a positive correlation also. So to do the heat map, SNS dot heat map, okay, we have to do the correlation first, okay, df dot cor. So correlation will calculate the percentage, how, correlate, how it is related to other variables. And when you want to show the answers on the screen, then give it as a naught is equals to true. Okay. So this is your heat map. Okay. So you can see here the light peach colors are highly correlated, whereas the dark colors here are negatively correlated. So from here you can see that um, these are all the middle ones. Okay. Just like the age and the charges are related, highly correlated. And the next comes BMI with charges. But whereas the children is all negatively correlated, which is not much important. So likewise, we can find out which parameters are important for uh, choosing the algorithm. Like when you choose the algorithm, if you have 100 columns, so when you want to reduce only to 20 columns, then you can find out which are all variable exhibit higher correlation that can be selected okay the second plot that we are going to see is called as pair plot or it is also called as a scare, uh, scatter plot uh, but it will bring out the relationship between okay between each variable okay between each variable so if there are four columns uh, it will bring out the relationship between each column to the other one also so pair plot will give you an overall structure. Okay. The syntax is SNS dot pair plot. Okay. Your, your data. And you can specify with respect to your a particular column also. The last one is Say suppose with region if you want it, you can. Okay, we'll remove the huge column and then check. So 
So pair plot will take some time to generate. Yeah, it will show you the entire relationship between uh, between one variable to the another variable. You can see age age with the charges, age with BMI. So it brings out a relationship between every other variable. So that is your pair plot. And we have a swarm plot also. Similar to your uh, violent plot only swarm plot also. So the syntax for swarm, swarm is, you can see the points very clearly in the swarm plot. So SMS, okay, the plot name is swarm plot. It will look like a spam of bees. Okay. So SNS dot swamp plot. Okay. You can just give uh, any two field DF of charges. Okay. I am just bringing out the swamp plot between two things. Okay. So swamp plot uh, will give you a, a, a scatter chart kind of it, but as per the columns. So the points will be clearly visible. Uh, where exactly which regions are exactly been there. So swarm part is swarm plot is also easy. And the next one we are going to see is your joint plot. As the name implies, okay, uh, it is going to use for bringing out the relationship between variables. Okay, so to bring out the relationship between two variables. Okay. We are going to use the joint plot. Okay, the syntax will be sns dot joint plot. Okay, two variables, any two variables you can put. So let me have okay. So I'm just going to make a, a joint plot with two variables. Okay. So this is the joint plot. So it shows the relationship between the age and the charges. So you can have some variations in the joint plot also. Okay, you want to change the, instead of uh, scatter, you want to have uh, the other kind. Okay, let me use kind is equals to, okay, x again. So instead of points, you will get a hexagon kind of thing. Or when you want to use the regression kind, you can use kind is equals to reg. It will show you the line which separates these two rows. So this is using your line, regression line. So these are the, some of the plots which comes under your Seaborn Library.